Maxwell. I'm the lead coach at Omega Education. I really want to appreciate everyone, I mean, from the least respected to the most uh, prominent person that's actually been so supportive to Omega Education. We want to say a very big thank you. I also want to thank our team and fans on YouTube, uh, those are actually making comments, uh, recommendations, suggestions. Oh, I want to say a very good time to you too. Without you guys, we will not be here. I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I say a very big thank you. I know for all those that actually have been there, like, oh, uh, Omega, are they going to really live up to expectation? Uh, are they really going to, um, you know, deliver? Uh, we'll just say, <laughs> let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay, 2022 is going to be great. A lot of offers will be coming up. We also will be having a cut down on our. Uh, tuition uh, uh, fees, very big slash from coming up. A lot of free materials like copy stuff, copies. It's going to be a bumper uh, period for us at Omega Education and for all those I'll be doing businesses uh, with us. Uh, so you will welcome you in advance and we know it's going to be a great moment for us all together. All right. Um, all right. It's a wonderful thing, really, when you have the opportunity to make a presentation. Of a certificate to show that you can speak and communicate in the English language, and um, all the forms of um, um, certifications I okay, came for entry exams. I'll be concentrating more on the, the IELTS today. Record has proven that the rate at which candidates are writing the IELTS has quadrupled over the time, okay, and from the statistics with should be seen that more than 55% of those writing the eyes are written it more than once. Okay, so meaning that we are having more of a retake candidates, more of retake candidates than um, the regular new entrants or entrants into the uh, test um, field. Now, why do people or let's say candidates have to retake the test? It's very obvious, they didn't get the right one score. So it's evident that IELTS will rate you on the listening, the reading, the speaking, and the writing separately or independently. Then they will consummate the scores divided by the total number of sections, which is four, and you have your average band score. All right? Now, you should note that regardless that you're having a general overall band score, the band score gets its you know, accumulations from the independent sections. So if you do well in your listening, your speaking, and your writing, and you don't do well in your reading, it's evident that you might likely take the test today. Because most times, you are asked to give a minimum band score in each other section. So if you don't beat the minimum band score, maybe it's evidently you have to write the test again. And that can be very irritatingly annoying, okay? I can testify to that. So what you need to do is this. Every individual cannot develop is our skill at the same level. I mean, all the skills of communication, the receptive and the expressive. Receptive skills, what you take in. You listen, you read. Expressive, you speak, you write, okay? So, no matter how good you are, you can have uh, what I call an all-round development on these areas. So, some way or somehow, you have a more developed instance on a particular skill and a less developed situation or disposition on another skill, okay? But because the examiners are aware of this, so they give you a minimal band that you must not go below. So if you have a score below this minimal ceiling, that means you have to write the test again. So what most students do that I find very um, unnecessary or unusual is that if they take the test and they lose one section, let's take for instance the reading section, you expect it to have a 7 and you got a 6.5, which implies you have to take the test again. You did pretty well in your listening, your speaking and your writing. Now, a lot of students will take the test again by registering for the immediate, uh, let's say the next um, available test date, Meaning you just want to take it and get it over in there as a, get over and go with it as a case model. And during the preparation time, the little space provided between when the test result was out and when the next test will take place, what they quickly do is they just put in so much time into reading, 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 read, and they keep on reading, trying to understand the scope of reading, increasing their speed, the pace, 
understanding tectonics of a question, which of the questions have they lose the most, which they gain the most. So everything they do uh, in preparation to the IELTS is just on the reading, which implies that not much time is given to the listening, the speaking, and the writing. What you know here is this. If you're going to retake the test, you're not retaking the reading only. You're taking both the listening, the speaking, and the writing all together. So the big question, or what I say the golden question is, why are you concentrating more on the reading at all? It's understandable, you feel the reading, no questions So it's understandable, you feel the reading, no questions asked. But the thing is this, you are not just retaking the reading alone. You are taking the entire test. Hmm? The entire test. So you should concentrate on the entire test. So your knowledge, would I say, your presupposition on the other sections, I mean the listening, uh, the speaking and writing as the case for be, should not override the fact that you still need to take them as if you're not taking them before. That is the best way to go about it. Do not underrate any section you failed if you are taking the test before and you have to take it again. So regardless that you pass the test the first time, there's going to be you're going to pass it again. So your preparation should cover all four sections. Be smart, please. All four sections. And don't forget, if you feel that anything you're doing in the other sections will look like time wasting, you should have concentrated all the time on the reading that you need, then I guess the result will tell at the end of the day. Let me say this clearly. Every time you take a test, it's very evident that the examiner that marks a particular test, like say test one, like your first attempt, will not be the same examiner will be marking your second attempt. So you have independent individuals. So independent examiners will view your test in different, uh, different forms of varieties of uh, manners of approach. You realize there's a scheme of work, there's a scheme of marking, as a case may be. The mind, the way the mind works, can be for this, the same for everybody, okay? So you need to understand that scope first. Two, your mindset while you were taking the first exam is not and can never be the same as when you're taking the second test, I mean the second attempt. So you need to put all the psychology into place. For instance, in the first test, you were more like, I just want to take the test, have a feel of it, understand what it's all about. If possible, I get all my four section brands correctly, get a wonderful borrow bank and I'm good to go. You didn't do well, you have to take the test again. Now the pressure begins to mount. That pressure that is mounting affects you psychologically, mentally, even at the level of your psychomotor skills. It's understandable. So you need to understand the fact that every time you take a test that you have failed initially and you're retaking it, you have a higher level of pressure. It's human nature. I remember those days while I was still in university, then you have to take a carryover. But I, I didn't have any carryover anyways. Uh, you have a uh, mix that will have to take a carryover. You always see that pressure on them about, am I going to still pass it? Are you going to do well? And it's a lot better. It's just on the subject where you have to read over the mentality of the course content. The slight difference we have on the IELTS is you're not just concentrating on the entire content this time around, you're putting more uh, attention or more engrossment into a section, just one particular part out of the four parts there, which is not a smart thing to do, so it's, not, it's not a smart thing to do. So I advise, as uh, a lead coach in Omega Education, I also have an experience over 20 years in the field of teaching as an educationist, I would encourage you, every time you are to retake a test, treat it as you've not done it before. If you have sections that you feel you're good at, become better. If you have sections that you feel you're better at, become the best. Okay? Don't overlook, underrate, create some form of um, floxy, not singing, amplification. Okay? On a particular, oh, that is obviously what was that? Okay. Belittle, that's what I mean. That. Belittle any section. Okay? That way it gives you some synergized psyche towards writing the test more appropriately and probably more effectively because you're not more prepared. When you already have an idea of what the test is all about, you have the experience and you have the feel, so it's understandable. Get a picture. So that's just the way you need to go about it. 
Take the test before you're to take it again. See yourself like a fresher, okay? Put your mind to all the four sections. Take everything all over again and try as much as possible to manage your mind. It's very important. So don't get into the test all defeated, all beaten down, black and blue. That will actually give you more like the wrong picture, or the wrong feeling, or the wrong attitude as a case model. I wish you success, really. I, 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 I find it very appalling. I, I feel kind of um, decimated, to, you know, academically, when students will have to write a test over and over and over, you know? I would also encourage you, if you've taken a test before and you didn't do well, get help for crying out loud. Get help. When especially if you if you lose um, the writing section or the speaking section, or in a way you didn't catch up with the reading section, get help. I mean, it wouldn't cost you a fortune. Just seek somebody's opinion about how your performance or probably a approach towards the test is all about. In 2022, one of the greatest achievements we should be looking at is writing any test words, okay? Just write stuff for the test, make what I call brutal preparation, and ace the test. My name remains yours truly, SOP Maxwell. This is Omega Education, okay? And remember, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, basically can do that now. Go below this video, tap on the notification bell so that you get notified when a new video pops up. All right? See you on top. And break that this one out every day.